Hi right, guys, welcome back to Matt Chat. This is episode number 18, in which we cover one of the best sports titles ever made, Epic's Summer Games. So why talk about Summer Games? I think uh, Summer Games is a very interesting game uh, for many reasons. Uh, for one, it was just so much fun to play. Uh, I, I spent, I don't know how many hours as a kid playing this with my uh, little sister, uh, we played all the different events. Uh, we competed uh, to see who could be the best diver, the best gymnast, uh, best runner, you you name it. Uh, we, we had a blast. Uh, we had a lot of fun selecting a country. Uh, so although, uh, you know, of course, we like to watch uh, the real Olympics on TV, uh, here was a chance to compete in all of these events right here in the comfort of our own homes on the uh, Commodore 64. Um, so very fun game. Uh, people that still rave about this game today. Uh, another thing that is very uh, noteworthy is just the sheer scale of the game. Uh, can you? I mean, can you imagine uh, being a developer in 1984, or I guess uh, even earlier, and uh, trying to conceptualize how to bring something as uh, complicated and, and dynamic as the Summer Olympic Games into something that could be run on a Commodore 64 computer and <laughs> actually be fun and accessible? Um, that's a huge task, and I think uh, in many ways Epix uh, succeeded um, in this endeavor. I just uh, thought it set, sort of set the tone here. I'd read a little bit of the uh, blurb on the uh, back of the box. You were an Olympic athlete competing in eight key events at the Summer Games. How well can you score in track, swimming, diving, shooting, gymnastics, and more? Uh, and my favorite part, so realistic there's even an opening ceremony and awards presentation after each event. Wow! <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of funny today. Probably these uh, graphics are more cute uh, than realistic. It was still a very impressive achievement, um, even something like uh, the national anthems. Uh, so there's all these different countries you can select. Um, each has a uh, courtesy of the SIDship and the Randy Glover, of all people, who uh, did the Jumpman game uh, we talked about a little bit in an earlier episode. Um, this was just an impressive achievement. It really is a game on a, on a grand scale. Um, as we'll see, uh, there are eight different events. Uh, this roughly translates into about uh, six uh, mini games. I think I have the, that count right. Maybe a, maybe a little fewer, a few fewer. <laughs> uh, but anyway, what we'll see is while some events are closely uh, similar, such as the two different swimming uh, competitions, two different uh, track events, uh, there is a lot of uh, diversity uh, when you go from something like skeet shooting. Uh, to diving or, or gymnastics. Uh, so there is a good diversity of games. Uh, today we talk about this as a collection of mini games. Uh, before we uh, play summer games, a little about me. Uh, as you know from uh, previous Matt Chats, uh, <laughs> my name is uh, Matt Barton. I am the author of a book called Dungeons and Desktops, uh, which traces uh, the history of the computer role-playing game, and co-author uh, with my friend Bill on uh, Vintage Games, uh, which takes a broader look. It uh, basically talks about all kinds of uh, influential games uh, for all platforms. If you like uh, these Matt Chats and you want to do something to help me out, uh, you can send some links to a friend. Uh, let them know what, what we've got going on here. If they're interested, they can uh, watch uh, these videos. Uh, please comment on these videos. Let me know what you think, uh, any ideas you might have uh, for future episodes. But anyway, just do something. Let, uh, let me hear from you. Uh, let me know you appreciate it. It always makes my day to see some uh, nice comments or to uh, see some nice posts on our website at armchairarcade.com. Uh, All right, then, uh, without further ado, let's play the Summer Games. So there you have it, the opening ceremonies of the Epix Olympics. I don't have time to show you, but uh, following that a little uh, cutscene is a uh, performance by Bjork. All right, so now we get into uh, the fun part of the game. You get to select your home country, and as you can see, there are many uh, different flags, and once you select one, you get to hear a unique national anthem.
I always like to go with epics uh, myself. I thought that was a pretty neat idea. But there are lots of illegitimate countries, too. Uh, let's let hear the U.S. <laughs> You may be seated. And uh, one more in honor of Mark, a good friend of mine. I have to admit, after playing uh, all these different countries, I thought that the computer gave the Netherlands a bit of an edge. Uh, they always seem to get that in uh, games. All right, so the first thing we have here is the pole vault. All right, so what you want to do here is push down on the joystick uh, to get into the uh, vault slot there. Push up uh, to jump and then press the button to release the pole. It's a bit tricky, but uh, and probably a little bit more difficult than actual pole vaulting, but if you get the timing down, uh, you can do this over and over. Uh, here's one of my favorite events, the dive. Uh, diving's not too bad, you just need to remember to go right for full tuck, back for pike, left for half pike, and forward for layout. Uh, nothing to it. I hope you didn't dry off because we have another water event, the relay. And the trick here is to uh, start at just the right moment. You're supposed to push right on the joystick just at the right time. If you do it too quickly, it'll be a false start, uh, but if you do it right, you might get a bit of lead over your uh, competition. Now I'm not really sure um, what you're supposed to do uh, to speed this guy up. Uh, the manual says to push the button just as the hand goes in the water and then uh, push left uh, as soon as you uh, get about halfway to that red. Um, I'm not really sure. I, maybe that would work uh, for Michael Phelps but it did not work for me. Now, next up is some foot races. You have a dash and a relay. And what you do here is just jerk your joystick back and forth as fast as you can. Um, obviously, this was tough on joysticks, and as a matter of fact, Epix did manufacture its own line of joysticks, uh, which always uh, made me wonder. And by the way, uh, any similarities to this and Track and Field, a game released in the arcades a year earlier, is surely uh, entirely coincidental. Uh, next up, we have another of my favorites, uh, Gymnastics. Uh, which is uh, pretty similar to the diving, the same sort of uh, gameplay mechanics here. Um, again, it's a matter of careful timing, it's a matter of uh, precision. It's also possible to cheat here. Uh, a little known fact about this game is if you play as the Chinese, then you get a much smaller girl who can perform uh, much more impressive stunts. And finally, we have my personal favorite, the skeet shooting. Now this is a you probably can't tell this, but it's actually pretty tough to do this with a joystick. Uh, with a mouse, it would be a lot easier. Um, but as you can see, it's uh, pretty straightforward, and you get lots of shots. It's an excellent way to work off some of that stress after the running and swimming. And after this game, if you uh, chose all the, all the competitions, uh, then we get to the screen to see the final standing and who, who's going to get to go home with the gold. This game did so well that Epix released uh, several uh, sequels. There were Summer's game, Summer Games 2, uh, which introduced some really cool new sports. There's Winter Games, uh, California Games, which had skateboarding and um, all sorts of uh, uh, BMX bikes uh, races and things like that. There was World Games, which had everything from log rolling to bull riding and uh, weightlifting. And then in 1988, there were these two officially licensed U.S. Olympics titles. And that's all for this week's Match Yet. Keep the torch burning. <laughs>